So I know for you, Joe, you'd been exposed to photos of animals and, and being in this environment for at least 15 to 10 years. But for you, Liz, were there times when this got to be a little bit too much, when you saw things or maybe got too close to certain things that were you know, very difficult to deal with? And how do you, as a documentarian, keep going with a project that you said is really a personal journey for you in some ways, exploring some of these issues? Um, as, a, as a filmmaker, I've, I've been on the front lines all over the world um, since the 90s. Um, covering human rights um, films and my last film is about the environmental um, the, the world water crisis so I'm familiar with the front lines um, but this the ghost in our machine is the first film that I've made that focuses on suffering of the suffering of animals the exploitation of animals so that very new for me and um, it was overwhelming for sure and um, I think um, the editing process is always um, therapeutic because it's an opportunity to sift through, um, you know, a lot of material, a lot of raw material, and to make sense of it and work through um, the experiences. So you had some moments during editing with yeah. Julia, the, right? When you were editing the pig. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Toronto Pig Save um, vigil. Um, I worked with um, some wonderful editors and I just recall this one day when I came into the edit suite to look at a, a sketch of a particular scene and it's the uh, vigil scene um, of the Toronto Pig Save activists um, with Joe um, bearing witness to the, the trucks um, that are going past and I just, I just broke and I just started crying and uh, that for me was sort of like um, an awareness that I had been holding a lot in for a long time in the making of the project and I just felt flooded with uh, emotion and um, needed to take a break um, and come back to it. So a break as in like a day. I needed to leave mm -hmm. the suite and just I needed a break just to process and then come back to the work. Um, but anyways, that was just a, a moment for me that was, um, the gravity of it just hit me. Because, you know, when you're in work mode, you're in work mode. And um, you can, um, at least for myself, I know I can detach on a certain level. Um, but I wasn't, I, I just, um, you know, of course, of course it's all going to accumulate and have an impact. So, yeah. Did the roles change in some sense? Were you able to then say to Liz, you know, I, I've been in those situations and here's, here's what I do, or, or you just... I don't know that we ever related in that kind of way. Mm -hmm. um, but, exactly. you know, community is important with this work that we're doing and supporting one another. And the, uh, the, um, the, d the depth of just like how bad the situation is for animals isn't really known and isn't really respected. If you're someone who's very empathetic towards animals, you're seen as just like a softy or a weak. And um, so it is really important uh, for empathetic and compassionate people and activists to really support each other and understand one another.